I'll hold it. Um, welcome to The Walking Dead Season 5 panel. Uh, you guys have waited a lot, a long time. We understand that. We have a lot of fun things to show you. Um, the panel's going to mix up a bunch. We have a bunch of video. Um, this, from, I went to the set a couple, maybe like four weeks ago, and everyone unilaterally has said the same thing. You know, last season started off kind of calm. Everyone was farming. And this season, apparently, super intense from the get-go. This season is apparently going to be brutal, intense. We're going to talk about it. This is the most ambitious season they've ever done on Walking Dead. Uh, season 5 premieres Sunday, October 12th at 9 p.m. Um, totally, Talking Dead's going to stay exactly the same. That's not going to change. We're in a fake living room, and we're talking about... Thank you. There's not going to be more explosions on Talking Dead, sir. There's not even one explosion. Um, I would like to start out, we're going to bring the producers out, we're going to talk to them for a few minutes, we're going to show some stuff, and then we're going to bring the cast out after that. So please have me walk to the stage, showrunner and executive producer, Scott M. Gimbo! So what, what is happening at this point? Do they, do they ever make it out of the train car? Well, uh, here's the thing. Do they ever make it out of the train car? Uh, you know what, I'm not going to answer that. Talk a little bit about the themes going into season five and, and, uh, and just set up a little bit for people. Well, um, you know, when they lost the, these are spoilers, so if you haven't seen the show, I don't know why you're here. Uh, <laughs> But uh, once they lost the prison, once they lost Herschel, um, all bets were off. And I think they did find out that you can't come back from the things that you've done. You have to live with them. But also those things that you've done make you incredibly formidable. So now that you are, uh, everybody who's alive is, in one way or another, uh, has done unbelievably unspeakable things. Who do they become? Who are they gonna be? This season is going to define these characters. And is there anything you can tell us about the termites other than that they're a well-organized colony of hipsters? They, well, I mean, uh, we're going to see the Urban Outfitters, the, <laughs> you know, the record. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say this, we're going to see the story of Terminus. Okay. So we're going we're to see how it happened. All right. Well, sort of jumping over that, um, can we sort of talk a little bit with Herman about uh, how close... No. Okay. Uh, let's go again. Okay. What... The show's always had a nice kind of interweaving with the comics, and you know, like some, some things transmute to other characters from the comics, and there are touch points along the way. And I've always really admired the fact that you get two totally different experiences from the comic and television show. But moving forward, how closely is the show going to follow back in line with the comics, or what, what's your plan? Yeah, it, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, Terminus uh, certainly seems like a pretty major departure. But uh, I can say that you know very quickly early on in the season we're going to start getting back on track of you know dealing with some more comic book events and you know while this will be a season uh, same as the other seasons where you know there are things that we use and things that we don't use and things that we adapt directly and things that we change a lot I, I think that, you know this is probably uh, a season that's going to you know be pretty close to the comics I think at the end of the day there's a lot of comic stuff that we're going to be bringing in so there's a lot of things that you guys who can read the comics are really excited about seeing that uh, we're I think we're going to get to this season so there's going to be some cool stuff ahead. And so where where are the, since everyone's in the train car as far as we know. Like, and always in the train car, so for, for the it's all going to be changed so that it takes place in the train car. One whole season in the train car. Shut yep. up live. Do it, stream it, 24 hours. What happens, uh, like where's everyone's head at, do you think, like once they get into the train car? And it, I mean, Rick seems to be, after he bit that guy's throat out, spoiler, uh, Rick seems to be like, not just old Rick, but like, Mega Kung Fu Grip Rick. 
So yeah, I mean, look, Mega Kung Fu Grip Rick is the Rick that we've had in the comics for a while. Right. It's just taken this long for us to get to him in the show. But the thing to, to, to notice, the thing to recognize is that all of the characters have been through this incredible trial leading up to that train car. So it's not just Rick that is uniquely prepared to deal with the threat of Terminus. It's all of them. They're all very capable, and they're all very ready to do what they have to do to survive. So this is a very dangerous, very different group of people that we're experiencing. Yeah. And, and as far as uh, one moment from the comic book that we didn't do on the show, in the comic book, uh, well, actually, I'm not going to say it here because it was children, but uh, he says they're effing with the wrong people. Actually, he doesn't say they're effing. What do they say, Robert? I'm not going to say the F word here. OK, good. Uh, on the Blu-ray, it will be like the comic. Oh, good. Yes. So you get swears. your F-word! Yes, I know that was some outcry. I would pay more money for an F-word. There you are. Um, so... <laughs> that sounded weird. Uh, but I did mean it that way. Um, Gail, I want to talk a little about the locations because I came and visited you guys uh, when you were shooting in one of the locations, but I didn't. I did my best to shield myself from everything because I don't want to get anything spoiled because I get just as mad as anyone else about spoilers. But um, what uh, what can you tell us about the different locations, where you guys are, and what the production's been like this season? Sure. Uh, well, first of all, the cast and crew are very grateful because, like the train car, we have a few other locations that we call the tip, chigger, and mosquito free zones. Mm -hmm. You might call them suburbia and urban settings, right. but that's not what we call them. Right. Um, and, you know, some might possibly, maybe, be inspired by the comic book. Um, so those of you who haven't read the comic book yet, now's a good time to start. Read the comic book. <laughs> oh, please do. Thank you, Gail. That was awesome. <laughs> where, where did I get them, Robert? That's, that's you can get them everywhere, but your local comic shop is the best place. I remember when I first started doing Talking Dead, and I was really nervous that you didn't, I didn't know if you liked what I was doing. I go, am I doing a good job? And you go, I don't care what you're doing. You mentioned the comic book. That's good for me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't reveal to people how cutthroat I am. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. No, I meant you said it was Or good. I will fire you. <laughs> Damn it. You can, too. But, but, but this season... You know, we have some pretty spectacular scopes, some of which you'll be able to see in the promo piece. If you guys really, really want it down the line, maybe we'll show you. Um, and uh, and you'll, you'll see us take some pretty big leaps with the characters and with the set pieces. Good. Bigger than ever. So speaking of characters, David Alpert, uh, can you talk a little bit about new characters or people that we'll see this season? Uh, you know, we have a long-standing objective on the show to hire pretty much everyone who's ever been affiliated with The Wire. So... <laughs> so Chad Coleman. Chad Coleman. Chad Coleman. Chad Coleman. Uh, Lauren Schiller. Steve Mann. Uh, we have a number, number of alums on the show. And so to that end, uh, Seth Gilliam will be joining us as Father Gabriel Stokes. Um, and he played Detective Carver on The Wire. So we're excited to have him on the show. Excellent. Uh, and for Mr. Nicotero, um, every, I feel like every year that we're in here, and I always go, okay, each year you kind of try to break as much ground as possible with special effects and, and, uh, and close-up shots of gore. How do, you, how do you, how do you up that after, you know, going into a fifth season? Like, what, what did you do to prepare and present new types of Well, we, uh, this season there's a lot of really interesting Walker set pieces, you know, when we did, uh, uh, the premiere last year, we had the walkers falling through the ceiling in the big spot, and we thought, oh, how great would it be to put to put these great uh, hunters, survivors, into a, a situation that they can't be prepared for. So this season, there's you know, it, we we're up to like episode seven filming right now. So we have several cool set pieces. How would you describe season five as compared to you know one, two, three, and four? Like, where, where how do you think visually? Like, what what do you think of when you? Think show at this point. Well, you know, what's interesting is because we left off in such a great cliffhanger, uh, like we were saying, that's one of the first times we, we really left off um, in that kind of situation. But visually, you know, it takes us to different places. You know, we, we'll probably revisit a few places that you may recognize that you'll see in the promo. But then there's new worlds that are being, uh, that are being introduced as well. And that was really important to us, even putting the promo together is to show that the Walking Dead world continues to expand and our characters continue to expand with it. So there's a lot of really cool landscape that we're going to explore. Thanks for watching. To find out more Movie Guide content, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, 
like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter to hear more about Hollywood Buzz and know before you go.